do you think that you might be ready to love again after narcissistic abuse? Well, if you are in that camp or if you want to learn how you get to that camp, I'm going to have a guest today, Amy Saunders. She is going to talk to us about love after narcissistic abuse. She's going to give us a little bit of her story and then she's going to enlighten us on how we change the story, how we like reframe things in our head so that we can heal and stop injuring ourselves with some self-doubting and self-betrayal kind of messages. So um, let's welcome Amy and we're going to find out if we're ready to love again. How do we know? This is Tracy Malone and um, let's get started. Thank you so much for joining me, Amy. Well, thank you. And thank you for this opportunity. I'm so excited to be here and to talk to your audience and hopefully give them some insight on my story and where I've been and, and yeah, just share this time with you. Absolutely. It's, it's great to see you, but let's give everyone a little bio about you because I could read it, but it's so much better when it comes from your voice. Okay. So a little snaps of my life is Currently, I'm a mindset coach for women. I help them rewire their brains because I needed a lot of work on my own brain because of my own experiences. I learned how to say yes to everybody all the time, starting at a very young age. And that led to even marrying someone when he was on his knee proposing and me just saying yes, even though my gut was in total knots. I knew what my soul wanted and I turned away from myself, but it was because I was so used to just saying, yes, yes, yes. It's kind of just the way I was trained. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of women do this in general <laughs> because we're, we're very good at trying to wear all the hats and trying to please all the people, but it had become such a habit for me that I forgot what I even wanted for myself, even though I would have like my inner, my inner self saying, please, 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 you know, like don't do this thing. I would still just please the other people. So that led me down this road of, um, an unhealthy relationship. I ended up staying in it within, within a couple weeks of being married. I knew I had made the biggest mistake of my life and I stayed married for 11 years, <laughs> three kids later. And finally, you know, it just so many things happened in that relationship that I, didn't even recognize myself in the mirror. So I started picking myself up. I started down the road of self-help and like healing and all of that. And along this whole journey, I was, a I was a fitness coach. I like would train women and I'd motivate them and, you know, try and make them happy. But then on the inside, I was dying. Mm -hmm. And so there was always that part of me that loved working and like helping women and helping them lose weight and feel good. But I wasn't doing that for myself. So in a nutshell, it took me down this road of mindset, which now I coach on all the time and it's been so much fun, but more than anything, I want people to, your message is so strong and so awesome that when I connected with you, I'm like, I would love to share my story to help because I wish that you were around back when I was going through all the things, <laughs> you know, like that would have been really helpful because I felt like there was not a lot of places I could turn to. So in a nutshell, that's what I do now and where I've been. You're like, you're like, you're like helping people heal and, and move on and, and almost change the recordings in their head. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I like to say, I like to say like, there's like a path, like if you're on a, I like to hike. So that's my analogy I give is you have these neural pathways and the longer you stay in those, like, so there there's thoughts that come up and you get to decide whether or not they're true. Usually they're not. We just think that they are. And the more you think them, the more, the stronger the belief. And usually they don't really serve you. So I teach women how to break free from that and how to like move past, you know, whatever's holding them back. Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's relationships kind of depends, but ultimately through my experience, I was able to break free from that. I'm now in like an amazing relationship. I'm remarried. We have seven kids between the two of us, a lot of kids. Yeah. And um, we have an awesome lifestyle. I'm like, hey, more women need to know that it's possible. More people, not just women, but people. Like you do get to decide how to live your life mm -hmm. and you do have a choice. I didn't think I did. I thought I just had to say yes. And so that's, that's my message now. 
Huge, huge. And I cannot tell you how many people I have talked to that had the same thing happen on their wedding day where they like knew they didn't want to. And maybe their parents were like, you have to, we have like the wedding today. Come on, don't whip out, you know, but they're like, no, no, no. I mean, and here they are on my, you know, sort of virtual couch going, oh, I didn't know this 10 years ago, right? It's so common um, because we give away our power and, and we just become the people pleasers. Oh, they say the, the wedding's already paid for. I guess I have to do it instead of this is my life and, and I have more choices, right? So um, today we are here to talk about like how to love again after abuse. And um, for me, my question as I was thinking about this last night was how does someone know that they're ready to, to, uh, to love again or, or even try to love? Because people who have been abused by a narcissist, even if they weren't married and they were just in a relationship, they have so much love trauma that, um, you know, they risk being gobbled up by another and more dangerous narcissist and being tricked again. So yeah. as I thought about it last night, I'm like, there's three camps. <laughs> and the never again camp is the, you know, they are so wounded and, and they have absolutely no desire. This isn't wounded that they're not healing it. They just are so confident that I'm done. Like, it's just, I'm done. Right. So that's the never again camp, the two sooners camp. Now I was in this camp when I forced my husband and went into another relationship six months later, it was just too soon, but mutual friends introduced me and it seemed safe. And, um, you know, I, I didn't know what a narcissist was for my divorce or for, um, this relationship until I knew from this guy. And then I realized that was my husband and everything else. So I was too soon. But mm -hmm. the, the last camp is, you know, the person who is completely healed. This is the person who has stayed away, in my opinion, for at least a year, like heal yourself, get your stuff together, do your work, discover your wounds, learn your triggers and how to control them, because there's nothing more triggering than dating. You know, you're talking about rejections and you only had one coffee and you're just like, oh, God, how much more can I take? Right. It becomes a, a huge thing that you have to understand your triggers. This person may not be like your narcissist but they trigger you and it comes back. So you have to learn that, right? Um, and so to me, those are the people that would know they're ready to date again. But in your opinion, like how does someone know that they're ready to date again? I think it's, I think it's actually hard to know, but this is what I will say. So the never agains, that was my camp. I actually was like, I am never, ever, ever going to trust another man in my life because they're all like this. Like that was me. <laughs> So I was the never again camp and here I am happily remarried. Right. Um, but what I think usually happens, so you were camp two, I was camp one. I think what usually happens is camp two because they think that they're ready. And especially with a narcissist, like if you're going through that process again, like they're really good at making you feel like you are a queen, that you are awesome, that they're, you know, you are their person because it's competition. They're going to go for that. They're going to do whatever they got to do to get you because it's, it's like a game, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of people fall into that when it comes, especially when it comes to like past abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. So in what I have learned is that, so I was the, I was camp one, even when I met my husband, I was still in camp one mm -hmm. and I went on a date for real. I went on a date to have fun because I'm like, oh, a free dinner and someone to tell me that I'm pretty sure I am never getting married and I am never having a boyfriend again. I mean, that was me when I was met my husband. I was still there. But I think that you have to rediscover yourself and you have to do the things that feel like good to you. So one thing that I recommend is I call it a passion list. And so, so as you're healing, you do need to do to self-discovery because you're so used to doing what they want. Mm -hmm. and you're so used to not walking on eggshells, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're whatever I can, or you are used, I shouldn't didn't say that, right? Like you're used to walking on eggshells. And so you don't even know what you want because you're so used to doing whatever right. the other person wants, right? So you have to go through this rediscovery. And so a good way that I've learned, and I did this myself, not even realizing that it was a great healing technique. I was like, I'm just going to start 
figuring out what I like again. Um, it's the passion list. I tell people to write 20 things that they love to do that don't cost money and 20 things that maybe do cost money and to do something from them every single day for at least 22 minutes. And the reason why it's 22 minutes <laughs> is because you got to feel those happy hormones, you know, those endorphins that come and they aren't going to come if it's only a minute long. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that's not mind related doesn't count. So it's not watching a show. You can't just watch a show. You can't just look at Instagram and scroll. Like it has to be uh, something that engages your mind, something that helps you find you again. So when people are in this process, what I found is a lot of them don't even know what they like to do anymore. So true. And so to come up with 40 things yeah. is really hard. <laughs> it's a hard thing to do, right? And so if you are going down this process of self-discovery and you're doing things that you love to do every single day, you're going to start learning boundaries that work for you and don't work for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you're also going to be able to pause. And I think it, when you tune inward and you're learning like, okay, what do I love? Then you're just doing this and you're turning inward. You're going to see the red flags when it comes to like another, like abusive relationship, you're more aware. Right. But the biggest thing is that you don't feel like you need somebody. And that's why so many people fall into number two. It feels so good, right? They're like, oh, someone loves me again. And, and they're treating me so well. Well, usually in these like unhealthy relationships in the beginning, they are treating you really well because they're trying to get you, right? So that's that's what I found that really helps is just that self-discovery. And a lot of people are like, oh, self-love, self-care, like go to the spa. It's more than that. It's like, it's starting to listen to your voice. Also, I talk a lot about healing the inner child where it's like that child that's inside of you that never really grew up. And they always try and like, you know, it's when you're fearful or when you're scared. Also walk through the fear, like try it again. Like the people that are in number one, <laughs> camp number one, they're like, no, I'm not even going to try that again. I only tried it again because I wanted someone to tell me I was pretty and I wanted a free meal. <laughs> I, I mean, that. legit. That's why I went. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I knew when I met my husband, I was like, crap, like I, uh oh, you what is this? <laughs> You know, so they know they're ready when they don't need somebody like they're fine. They're confident on their own. And they're like, I'm good. I'm good either way. Yeah. That but if you feel like you need somebody, you're not ready. Yeah, absolutely. That is that is one of the, the, the points that, you know, if, if you, you know, need someone in your life and then there's the I want someone in my life, too. But if you like, no, I, I can't be alone. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Right. If you have that kind of wound, they're going to be like, oh, I'll never leave you. Don't worry, baby. And the reality is they're just sitting there under the table going, yes, all I got to do is hook her and I've got whatever I need from her. Right. So it, that is a very dangerous place to be. Um, so we, those are those are great kind of like how we know and, and start to get there. I love the, the passion list. Um, I have my girls in my groups um, do an exercise where, you know, like go to the TV tonight and like what movie categories do you like? Like I never go to crime drama or this, like what is your passion? What do you always go for when it's that? Do you like sports? Do you not like sports? Think of those things because if you were with someone who likes sports and you hated it the whole time, maybe that is not something you want going forward. If that bothered you with the first husband or the first partner, right? Be like, oh, I don't like that. Let me get myself straight because you don't even really know what you like. So start with that. What's your favorite food? Start with a category and really think about this is me. This is me. I love to do this. I don't like to do that. They have to learn that. Yeah. Because then they aren't as susceptible to Oh, you like to jump out of helicopters into a snow bank? Awesome. That sounds fun. And your head is going, I will never do that, right? But you're, you have to have that because you'll get swooped up in the love thing and all of a sudden you'll be bungee jumping, right? So yeah. you have to know where you are. So as people are doing this, like, are there minefields that they should avoid if they're like thinking that they're ready to love again? Like watch out for, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> big old flag, right? 
Yes, really. I think, I think your, your soul knows. So I would, you know, your soul will sing to you if you allow it to, if you're turning inward, it's going to say yes or no. I mean, when I was getting proposed to, I mean, we are, he's on his knee. I left him on his knee. I'm not kidding for over two minutes blank. Like I just was like, <gasps> cause I knew. Right. But I still said, yes. Yeah. So your soul's going to know. No, I would, if it's because they're hot, step back. <laughs> like, if it's just the attraction thing, you got to step back and look at it. Like you have to be more curious. So I, I tell my, um, my clients to look at everything, you know, if you are out of a unhealthy relationship and you're moving forward. So once you feel like you're healthy and you don't need somebody, you got to look at every aspect. And does that work for you? Like, do you like what they do for a living? That might sound, you know, people are like, Oh, well, that shouldn't matter. It does matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does matter. Cause if they travel all the time and you don't like that, that's going to not work for you. Right. You actually get to choose. And that's exciting. You get to choose what you want next. Mm -hmm. So for me, <laughs> This is funny to me. So my, um, my ex was, he was like really big and muscular and tall. And, you know, my new husband is skinny and little and I love it, but like, <laughs> you know, and even my ex was like, he's so small. I'm like, and he's great for me, you know? So it might not even just be, and that's just like a looks perspective, percept, perspective, but I think it was important to me to be so drastically different. Like I am not doing that again, even to the physique, you know, <laughs> they're both attractive, but to the physique, I just didn't want that in my life because there was so much image. Right. But the other thing is like the, you do marry the family. That was an issue too. You like, if we're talking marriage, I'm saying marriage, cause I got remarried, you know, partnership too. Like, how are they inside the house? Like, Try everything. Yeah. Does sex life work? Like literally try everything as you're moving into it and just be curious and be okay with like, this may or may not be the person for me right now. It's might be okay, but long-term, like just don't be attached. Right. Cause I think women also get so attached so quickly, you know, and they are holding so tight. Like desperation. Right. Right. You know, that's, that's a hard thing. If you're so attached so quickly um, because this could be the last person I ever, you know, like, right. That's pretty common and they settle. Right. So it's, 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 I think as you were saying, an important part is to know what you want, like, you know, the big guy, the skinny guy, the, this, the, that, but it's, it's, I, I saw an interesting thing on Instagram the other day and somebody was like, so basically I asked all my clients what they are looking for in a new partner and they wrote tall and um, you know what? we got to get past that we have to go do they have integrity do they listen and honor your boundaries um you know are they accountable are they reliable like we have to have our list be a good job he has to have his house he has to like kids or dogs whatever those are fine too but the integrity is what these people have to look for the lying how many times are you going to tolerate that uh, i think a zero you know kind of thing should tolerance do you <laughs> Do they care? This is huge for narcissists. Do they care if you have their passwords? That's a huge landmine to me. Like if they are hung up on like not wanting you to see their passwords or their phone, I'm, I'm just saying you don't have to, I'm not saying stalk them, but I'm saying, do they care? Because if they're like, Oh no, 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 no. Then that might be a red flag. Right. Uh, I, I tell my people, my clients of like, write a list of your dream person, everything, just like you said, their integrity, how they show up. How are they with their family? How are they with your kids? How are they with their kids? How, you know, like look at all of it because all of it matters because you matter. Mm -hmm. You right. don't want to do it again. So you got to do things different. Right. Absolutely. And, and it's so hard getting started. And it doesn't matter if you're, you know, 23 or 63, it is hard to get started. Do, do you tell your clients if they're ready for love to go online? Like, how are they supposed to find these people? What is your advice for someone in this situation? Oh, my advice is you can find people everywhere. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I know I don't have great advice. So if you are, if you are searching for somebody. I do think online is an easy way to go, but you do have to be careful. 
Mm -hmm. right? Especially if you're not 20 years old anymore and you're not at college and you're not going to all of those things. Mm -hmm. For me, I started life over in my thirties. I was dating again in my thirties, which is still pretty young, right? But like I had three kids Mm -hmm. and I had to work around their schedules and I didn't want people to meet my kids. I didn't want them to, it's okay that they knew I had kids, but I had to protect my kids. Mm -hmm. And so I dated when I didn't have my kids with me, which is also more limited. So online for me worked. However, I didn't really care about men, right? I didn't want a man. Mm -hmm. So my story is that my friend would go quote, quote, shopping for me online. She was a married woman with children and this was fun for her. And when she thought there was like a cool person that she'd been messaging, acting like she was me, she would let me know. That's how I started dating, which is very, I mean, it worked because she knew me better than I knew myself at the time. Right. And I didn't really care. So my story is a little different that way because I wasn't actively seeking. I was actively dating because I thought I want to get out. I have three little kids. I'm tired all the time. I want something more, you know, so I did want that, but I didn't want a long-term relationship ever. And that changed because I was going through the actions of dating. So dating, if you're older is or online is it's a good avenue, but you have to be careful. Like, don't go meet them at your, like, don't have them come to your house. Don't get in their car. You know, you don't know who this person is. Text them for a while before you meet, do some FaceTime calls. We have access to a lot of social media avenues where you can do that before you actually meet, then go meet somewhere safe. You know, it's like, so build it. And that's what I did. I, I talked to him for a couple of weeks before on the app, before we graduated to texting. Now we were texting each other's phone numbers. And then we graduated to the next step of meeting each other. But, um, I think we're, you know, if you have people you trust and they know somebody that's single, look into that and just look at it as a game. Like when you're ready, just be open. You know, this is just a fun night. Don't be attached. This is a fun night. Let's see where it goes. Uh Right. Exactly. So in, in your business, like, um, you know, you help all these people, but you know, tell people, I would love it if you could tell people how you help people, because as, as an older person in the dating realm, a lot of people like the, I have people are like, I haven't been married. I've been married for 40 years. I don't know what dating is, right? What do I do? And they're just so lost. And, and I think having someone like yourself that would step in and, and be their, their right hand, except yeah. for you know, texting the guys for you. But <laughs> so tell me, tell, tell us what somebody like you and how they could help people who are, are trying to figure this out. Okay. Well, I do help rewire the brain. So I'll talk about my method. But as far as like, if we're talking about dating and they're older and they don't know what to do, it is weird. I mean, for me, I was married for 11 years. So I'd been off the market for 11 years before I went on. And that's, I mean, 20 years or 30 years is even longer. Right. So again, just being open with, this is a new friend. I'm going to go meet a new friend. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's okay. Like I meet new friends at church. I meet new friends in the grocery store. I'm meeting this new friend, whether it's online or whatever, and just don't be attached. That's like my biggest thing. Don't be attached. But my method is with rewiring the brain uh, is I take them through a process. A lot of people are familiar with the process, but I just take it pretty deep is we are in control of our thoughts. Like we don't think we are, They, they get served up to us all the time. Right. And we start to believe them. And then we act from that place. So when it comes to a situation and the situation, let's say you're coming out of a relationship or you're out of a relationship, how you now think about dating or how you now think about yourself is how you're going to show up. So if you're saying I'm not worthy or I'm not pretty or nobody's going to want me, guess what? And what are you doing? Right? Like no one's probably going to want you because that energy that you're putting off. So from that thought, Let's stick with the nobody's going to want me thought. Okay. So from that thought, you're going to feel a certain way. We all do. We have all these thoughts going on all day long. And from those thoughts create feelings. You know, if we think someone's like, really, we're really excited to go out on this date. How are we showing up for the date? We're excited. We're on a point. We put on our cute outfit, right? Like we're, we're in it. But when we're like, no one wants me, you feel ugly. Yeah. 
feel, you know, fill in the blank. How do you feel when you think that thought? Mm -hmm. Well, that's how you show up. So you start doing the things, you know, you create actions in your life to prove your thought because you're, you want to prove yourself true. (laughs) You're like, no, this is the way it is. I'm thinking this thought, it must be true. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so from that feeling, you start acting like you're not wanted. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're not working out, but you want to lose weight. I don't know. I'm talking about like the body image locks, like a lot of people when they start dating, that's what they think about. Even though there's so much more than that, uh-huh. that's what they think, right? Mm-hmm. Are they attractive? I'm going to attract whatever. Um, so from that thought or that I, I'm not worthy or I'm not wanted, mm-hmm. what kind of actions would you take from having that thought? I'm just going to ask you. Uh, uh, you mean to change it? No, just to be in that place right now. Like, how are you being? I would be, I would be depressed. I would be hopeless. I would not have any like belief in a, in a brighter tomorrow. I'd be like the guy with like pig pen from the peanuts with the black cloud over my head. (laughs) I would not get far because I believing in, and almost injuring myself by thinking that. Right. And so that's your result. Like your thought, you just proved it true because that's how you're showing up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You proved it true. So what I do is I teach them to stop and become aware. Like what thoughts are you serving yourself? Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason why you ended up in this relationship. For me, I was people pleasing. I didn't want him. My thought, if I stop right in that engagement, I didn't want him to feel bad that I was going to tell him no. (laughs) Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? (laughs) That was my thought. So I'll just marry you instead and have three kids and have this like talk life. Toxic life instead, because I don't want you to feel bad. So in turn, I'm going to feel bad for years. Mm -hmm. Like what? It doesn't even make any sense. No. So what I do is I train them to become aware of those thoughts. Like they're almost on a platter and you get to decide which one, which one are you going to take on today? Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, for me, I would change that thought from I'm nothing to you know, I, I, I am a total badass and anyone would want to date me. I don't know. Sorry. I just cursed on your podcast. Hopefully that's okay. But like, yeah, I am a catch. I mean, if you think you're like, I'm a catch and I have a lot to offer, mm-hmm. I deserve the best. Like when you start there and it might be a lot of these people they are healing from a toxic relationship. They actually might not believe that yet. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. They're like, ah, that's a really, I don't even think that's true. That's where like the passionless and discovery comes in. Right. So there might be a bridge thought before you can get to this, like I'm awesome, thought. it might be, I'm learning to love myself completely. A good middle. Yes. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like a bridge. So from that place, if I'm learning how to love myself completely or unconditionally, or again, whatever it is, what feeling does that bring up? I mean, it probably brings up a feeling of love. Mm -hmm. If you're loving yourself, how are you acting? What are you doing for you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, and when you're doing that, your result is there is more love for you, like from here, which then attracts more love into your life. And it's going to show up on all of your relationships. It's going to show up with your parents. It's going to show up with your kids. It's going to show up with the people that are like noticing you, how you carry yourself says a lot. But you're going to carry yourself better when you're in this place. Right. But it goes back to that path. I was talking about, like, it's not just one time you're like, Amy, I feel like I'm lying to myself. Well, yeah, you might in the beginning Mm -hmm. and that's okay because you are blazing a new path. You are on a mountain with all the trees and the shrubs and like all the stuff. And you're trying to create a new trail. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a little bit, but as you do it, it gets better. And as you practice this, so this is just, you know, around a new relationship, but as you practice this, you can apply it anywhere. Like if you're self-sabotaging with going to the gym or you're in a relationship and you're like, not happy, like, how are you showing it? What thoughts do you have? Right. Right. That's all brilliant. This is exactly what so many people need because you know, it's the rephrasing 
the self-injury that we do when we have that low self-esteem and when we've given up on ourselves and again that big black cloud who would want me I, I, I'm nothing you know when you've got that it's you're a victim and you're going to go on a date you're going to look like a victim you're sound like a victim and they're never going to call again and that's going to be that next injury see I told you Again, changing that framing and changing your beliefs about yourself and, and your own power is, I mean, you can't date in this world without some level of confidence because you will attract someone. And unfortunately, there are lots of narcissists out there that, you know, they will take the bottom people that don't have any self-esteem, build you up, and then hurt you even more right there there are people that are out there that target that you know person that has no self-esteem and they build them up and then they take their house you know? <laughs> <laughs> they take everything they yeah take it's true also like if you've ever been on a date mm -hmm. and the person is just talking about like all of the negative things that have happened in their life and where they are now and they're such a victim like you're for me, I was just like, cause I did date those kind of guys when I was back on, you know, dating life again, I was like, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, one more red flag about a dating story I had was this guy, super nice guy, but his wife was very toxic, his ex-wife. And he was so, he was, I would say he was number two. He wanted someone to like him. Right. So he's in this like number two camp and, um, he was still, you know, he did child support alimony, all the things. So he was taking care of her and their kids and, but their, but their kids were actually living with him, not her, but he was still paying her. And then he had her on his payroll too, so that he could employ her. Cause he felt like there were so many things that he felt bad about that were so connected that I was like, I don't want nothing to do with this. And that's all he would ever talk about. Right. So there's that where and this is just an example, but like, there's, like, how do you want to be on a date? And then what kind of person do you want to attract? Like no one, people might want to hear your story so much, but do they want to hear all the garbage the whole time? No, no, we're moving on. We get to like move forward. We get to create our life. Like, what do you want it to be? Yeah. yeah. I call them chapters. What's this chapter going to look like? Mm -hmm. You want to play in the characters. We create the story. I'm going to be this confident person and I'll fake it till I make it until I like, yes feel like I, I, I own whatever I'm faking, right? I, I'm, I'm powerful. I'm pretty. I'm not fat. Whatever people are holding on to is, is to really learn that you're holding on to the wrong things and how to rewire. So that is so helpful. Thank you, Amy, for telling us that. I think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, is there anything else before we go that you think that we've kind of missed on this ready for love thing again? <laughs> Who's ready for love. Um, the only thing I would say is that you're totally worthy of it. And it's out there. There are so many amazing people out there that are seeking for the same thing that you are, mm -hmm. right? They want a new life. They want someone else that can love them the way that maybe they weren't loved before in a past relationship. And you can be that person. There are in therapy. Uh, when I was going through all my therapy, my therapist said for every crazy out there, there's a normal, just go find the normal. So <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would say is like, you're totally worth it. And don't settle. Like you now get to decide how your next chapter is going to go. So go big, like dream big and get the person that's going to like sing to your heart for the rest of your life. I now am doing that. And it is like, we are so grateful for each other every single day because we know the difference. So it's a much sweeter relationship and it's totally there. If you want it, you can have it. That's, that's what I've got. Go get it. If you want it, you can have it. That's an amazing thing to, to close on. And I can't thank you enough. How can people find more information about you? So you can just go to my website, luckysanders.com. If you're interested in any kind of coaching, and if you just want to follow my stuff, it's all there. And that's how you can find me. So yeah. And thank you so much for having me on your podcast, YouTube, and all the things you're doing amazing things. And I just, people need to heal and you're helping them. So thanks for all the work you're doing. Thank you so much for being here. Wasn't that great? I knew you'd learn stuff. So which camp are you in? The never, never again, the way too early or the I've done my work and I'm ready to love again. So 
think that through. And this is Tracy Malone. If you need more information about narcissistic abuse, please visit my website, NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. If you're here for the podcast, thank you for subscribing. If you're here for YouTube, I always love to see you guys. Leave a comment down below and we'll give you all of Amy's information down below there. So have a great day.